What's going on guys? Nick Foy here from AskNickFoy.com and today's video is going to show you step by step how to set up your website. So I'm going to try to run through each step as quickly as I can to try to keep this tutorial as short as possible, but it's still going to end up being a very long tutorial. So make sure to stick with it. I'll also try to, you know, put some notes around this video that tells you the different timestamps for the different times that I cover different aspects if you're trying to learn specific things on setting up your website. But to get started, we're gonna pick out a web hosting company. So the hosting company I use is Bluehost. So if you go to asknickfoy.com slash Bluehost, that's an affiliate link that's gonna send you over to Bluehost and let them know that I sent you. I've partnered with them to try to give you guys a discounted deal. So you're gonna to wanna to click this big green get started now button and that's gonna take you to their different pricing plans where you can read the different pricing you know, options of what you're getting. But as starting out with your first website, you're just gonna need the basic plan. It's $4 a month. You get one website, you get plenty of web space and all these other features including email accounts for your website domain. So go ahead and click the select button and they're gonna ask if you've already got a domain name or if you want to create a new one. So this is where you're gonna pick your .com website URL name. So you can enter a new domain name in here or if you've already got one, you can type in the existing domain name you've already got. So for example, if I was typing in nickfoygolf.com to try to create a little golf website uh, to teach people you know, some different skills and lessons that I've learned, I would type that in. I would pick whether I want .com or any of these others, but we've already talked about in previous lessons the importance of picking a .com. This is the most professional one. You don't wanna pick these other wacky ones, um, but .co is also another option if the .com version is taken already. Uh, otherwise, you may need to switch out your domain URL and find something else if it's already taken. So click next. All right, it's gonna give you the option to sign in with Google if you want, but we're gonna go ahead and skip that. We're gonna go down to the account information. So you're gonna put in your information here, and then you're gonna scroll down here to the package information. So this is where you're gonna select your plan. I would recommend getting as much as possible, so either their 36 month plan or their 60 month plan. So this would be three years, this would be five years. The reason for that is it's cheaper. If you do a shorter time period, you're gonna be paying a little bit more per month. And by going this route, you're gonna lock in this low rate for as long as possible because once your plan comes up for a renewal, it's gonna jump you up to the original pricing, which I'm not for certain, but I think the basic plan, the original price is like six, seven bucks a month. And they're giving it to you now for four bucks a month. So by doing 36 months, you're locking in this low rate as long as possible. And then eventually you're gonna have to pay that normal rate, which it jumps up to six, seven, maybe eight bucks for the basic plan. So we'll go ahead and pick the 36 month plan. And it's gonna go ahead and tell you right now you're paying $142, which may seem like a lot, but remember this is three years of hosting, so really you're only paying four bucks a month. That's like a coffee. If you wanna cut out you know, a McDonald's breakfast sandwich or a coffee at Starbucks once per month, you can make up the difference for this hosting price. Setup's free, privacy domain free. Then they've got a bunch of add-ons that I recommend unchecking. There's no real reason to have any of these upsells. It's just a way for Bluehost to try to make up more money. Site Backup Pro, I'll show you a free plugin that'll back up your website for you. So you don't need that. Search Engine Jumpstart, you don't need to worry about that either. And then Site Lock Security, I'll show you a security plugin you can download that's free. So go ahead and uncheck that. And it's gonna show you that your total is 142.20. You're saving over $145, 50% off the original pricing. So I believe this would be about eight bucks a month is what it would cost you if you aren't locking in that, that lower rate at 36 months. Next, you go down here to payment information, give them your credit card info and click the I have read terms and click submit. All right, and from there, it's probably gonna redirect you to their WordPress page where they want to help you start installing WordPress. But if you need to install WordPress from your Bluehost account dashboard, or if you add another website URL in the future from a third party platform, then you're gonna need to log into your account 
and I'll show you how to install WordPress from inside your account. So all you do is you'd come to bluehost.com. They've got the little login tab here. So we'll go ahead and click that. And you're going to come to a page that looks just like this. They've got the sign on for your domain or your username and your password. You'll click submit. It'll log you in. You can also funnel the tab here over to webmail if you're trying to log in direct to one of your email accounts that you've hooked up to your domain name. And then if you want, you can copy this URL up here and you can save it into your toolbar, your favorites bar. So here I've got mine up here so that I can quickly click on the Bluehost tab in my browser. It'll take me here to my login page. That way it's saved for future times that you stop by the, the login page. All right, once you log in to your Bluehost account, you'll see a dashboard that looks similar to this. So we want to focus right here under the website box. There's this big orange install WordPress button. So go ahead and click install WordPress. All right, and then they're going to bring you to this page where they're wanting you to select the domain name that you're going to install WordPress to. So you'll go ahead and click this drop down box and it's going to have your domain name that you bought with your Bluehost account. And you can go ahead and click on the next button and it'll begin installing WordPress for you. Now, if you did not buy a brand new domain name with your Bluehost account, it would have been free. It would have come with your Bluehost account for free. Uh, but if you would have bought your domain name on another third party website like Namecheap. So if you go to asknickfoy.com slash Namecheap, that will take you over there. That's the website I use to buy all of my additional domain names. Uh, since it's a lot cheaper than buying them through Bluehost. And if I ever switch hosting companies, I want to be able to take my domain names with me. So I started buying them on a third party website called Namecheap. And now I hook them up into my Bluehost account. So in that case, I'm going to show you what to do. You're just going to go over here to domains in the menu bar. All right. And then you can see here they've got this shortcuts box here that says assign a domain name to your cPanel account or they've got the words assign right here. So we're going to go ahead and we need to assign our domain name from our Namecheap account to our cPanel in Bluehost. So click this link. All right, step one, it says you're going to need to use a domain name that is not already associated with your account. So here's where you're going to type in your domain name. So if I bought nickfoygolf.com off of Namecheap, I would type that in. Then what it's going to do is it's going to verify ownership. So as I scroll down here to step two, it's going to verify that I own nickfoygolf.com. So here it says the domain nickfoy.com is available for registration. So this means that I do not actually own, nobody owns this domain yet, not even myself. So back when I was on the Bluehost page and I typed in the domain name, I never ended up purchasing it. I wanted to save it and use it for this part of the tutorial. So here I'm going to actually show you how to buy it over on Namecheap if you decide to later on add more websites. Your first website, you can buy the domain for free through Bluehost, but if you decide to start a second or third website or you want a different domain name in the future, you can use Namecheap. So let's head over there. So here we are on Namecheap. It's, you come to their home page. They've got search domain. So I type in nickfoygolf.com. I hit the search bar. And it's going to show me the available domain names that would relate. So if the dot com's not available, then it's going to tell me, you know, other versions. All right. So right here, the nickfoygolf.com is available for $8.88 a year. So I'm going to go ahead and click add to cart and I'm going to go ahead and check out. And then next I'll be in the uh, my account settings page where we can start connecting this this domain over to my Bluehost account. All right, so I've gone ahead and purchased the domain nickfoygolf.com and here I am inside my profiles dashboard. So the domains right here, we're going to go ahead and click this manage button. And then what we need to do is change the domain name servers to point to Bluehost. So that's how you're going to connect this domain name to Bluehost. That way Bluehost can then verify that you own the website. So here's the drop down under name servers, it's already set to Namecheap. So we need to go custom and there's going to be two fields, name server one, name server two. So you're going to need to get these name servers from Bluehost. So what it is, is it's ns1.bluehost.com and ns2.bluehost.com. 
dot bluehost dot com. All right, so once you've typed those two in, you're gonna click the green check mark to save. And then let's go ahead and hop back over here onto our verify ownership step. So we'll go ahead and refresh the page now that I've bought the domain name and we'll try to re-verify it. All right, so here we are typing in nickfoygolf.com. It's gonna automatically start verifying and in a moment, it'll let you know that you're good to move on to the final step. So to verify ownership, please point the name savers to ns1.bluehost.com, ns2.bluehost.com. The name servers are currently set to DNS register. So this is telling me that it hasn't quite updated yet because we just typed in NS1 over here on the Namecheap account. So what you're gonna to need to do is just give it a few minutes uh, before you try to refresh and re-verify again. All right, so after waiting a few minutes, I just retested this again, typing in the domain name nickfoygolf.com. It automatically verified. It says ownership verified. So now you're good to go. You can go ahead and leave this checked as is, and then you can go ahead and leave the directory checked down here. They're gonna create a new directory for you, and you'll just click this green assign button. So it's pretty straightforward. We just typed in our domain name. After setting the servers over on Namecheap, it automatically verified for us, and we just scroll down here and click the green assign this domain button. All right, and the last step is to install WordPress the manual way when you add on a third-party domain name. So when you first bought your hosting account and you entered a new domain name that you were buying right then and there, they went ahead and redirected you over to a WordPress install page to help you get installed and get started. So you have probably could already skip these steps, but when you're adding it through a third-party website like Namecheap where we bought it off of Bluehost and then we had to add it into our Bluehost account, you have to manually install WordPress now. So that's where I showed you how to log into your account and click on the install WordPress tab in your cPanel dashboard, or you can come under WordPress tools and they've got this new install tab here and you just find your domain. So I found nickfoygolf.com. You can give it a subtitle, add a username that you want for your login, your password and your login email and go ahead and click install WordPress. And then from there, what I'm going to do is we're going to head over to nickfoygolf.com slash WP dash admin. So you got to type in your URL of your website address and you're going to have to type in W or slash WP dash admin. This gets you to the sign on page for your WordPress account where then you're going to enter your, your username and password that you're setting up here. And that's going to log you into WordPress. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through these steps. And next thing you know, we're going to be inside WordPress ready to set up your new website. Okay, so here we are inside the WordPress dashboard. And over here along the left hand column is the different navigation menu with the different tabs. So right now we're under the dashboard tab and it's going to ask you, you know, if you want some help setting up your website when you first come to, you know, when you first log in. So what kind of site can we help you set up? Are you running a business blog or a personal blog? So I'm going to go ahead and click on personal. Give yourself a site title. So Nick Foy Golf, you can give a description if you want. So helpful golf tips for beginners and then click next step. It says let's launch Nick Foy Golf. Are you going to update your site with news or blog posts? So I am going to publish blog articles. So I'll click yes. And then it says what should visitors see on your home page? Do you want to have your most recent blog posts? So every time you publish a new article, it gets put on your home page or do you want a static welcome page? In this case, we're going to go with static. Then it says build a starter contact us page. So if you want a contact us page, you can say yes. I'm going to go ahead and say no thanks. And then they want to connect you to Jetpack, which is a plugin where it's got different features. You can track, you know, analytics on your website. You can in increase security and site speed. So it does have some benefits. You know, there's a mixed review from bloggers of using Jetpack. I personally do not use it because a lot of times it conflicts with other plugins I'm downloading and it causes errors on my website. So I'm going to hit not now. 
All right, and that's it. That's the basic setup that they run you through. So now I'm gonna go more advanced here. So starting off at the top here, you've got your Bluehost tab. This is new. The WordPress websites have never had this before, so they've added it here. And they've also moved the Jetpack tab up near the top. This is also new. So you can come here to the Bluehost tab if you're using Bluehost to host your website. If you're using another company as your web host, then you know that option obviously won't be there. So they give you just you know some different thoughts. You can write, add new blog posts. You can add new web pages. You can create your navigation menu uh, that shows up at the top of your website. And then if you want to install WooCommerce to sell products, so they give you some helpful things. They also have got premium themes and free themes to give yourself uh, a nice looking designed website. And then they've got the customizer to customize some different settings on your website. Traffic and engagement, you want to get some social sharing buttons on your website so that people can share your blog posts. And then publicize, you can share your content with your social networks automatically when you publish content on your site. So this is a cool feature um, that you know Bluehost is helping you hook up here to your WordPress website. So anytime you publish a blog article, you're going to be able to have that article automatically sent out to your social media accounts that you've connected. That way you don't have to manually go tweet out your new article link or make a new Facebook post with your new article link. It'll do it for you. Performance, you can see how fast your page speed is. You can hook it up to a CDN. This will also speed up your website. So Cloudflare, for example, is a free uh, performance enhancement website you can sign up under and connect your website to. And then Photon, I'm not familiar with it but it's an image acceleration service so it'll automatically resize images for you and then you don't have to worry about resizing them ahead of time you can just upload any image into your website database under the media and then it'll automatically smush down those file sizes to make them a lot smaller without impacting the the image pixels so the image will still look nice and clear they just reduce the file size for you so that your website's going fast because you don't want a slow website and then you've got the hosting tab where you can manage your email accounts you can manage your different websites from the Bluehost control panel they've got domains if you've got different domain names that you're trying to find so this Bluehost tab here is brand new and it's really helpful it's got literally everything you know that you need to do to get your website up and running that we're kind of going to walk through quickly in this tutorial so it's kind of a nice checklist uh, and then of course they've got you know these different tabs up here you can check out as well so the first things first how do you publish a new blog post to your website you can come here under the post tabs under all posts and they typically give you a an example post to start so I typically will trash it because you don't want that blog post showing up on your website anymore so once that's deleted you just come here to the add new button and you can start typing out your new blog post. So you've got the title bar up here, and then you've got the article space here. This is where you actually type out your article. You can insert images and videos using the add media button. You can add a form using the add form button. And then you've got the menu bar across the top here with different features. If you want bullets, bold, italic, or you wanna add a link. So there's different features there. If you need to add in HTML code, you can switch from the visual tab over to the text tab and you could start typing in your HTML code. So if you're pasting in you know, some kind of coding or pixel or tracker, you can do so in the text tab. And then when you're ready, you just click the publish button and it'll publish it. If you're not ready, you can save it as a draft. You can even click here and schedule blog posts. So if you wanna schedule it for a later date, if you wanna preview it before saving changes or publishing, you can preview. And then down here, you've got categories if you want to set up different categories for your blog post to try to group them together so that people can find more relevant content based on you know, their needs. And then if you want to tag things, you can give it different keyword tags. So that's the basic of the blog post editor. The page editor is the exact same. It looks the exact same, so I won't run through that just for the sake of time. But you'd come here and click add new so a post is a blog post that goes on to your blog so those are articles you write a page is actually like a web page that you're going to design so once we pick out our theme we're going to use the page builder and come back here and start building out some pages comments this is where you can manage comments that people leave on your blog post you can delete them you can mark them as spam you can approve them Media, this tab is going to be where you upload photos if you want to your library or you can check out existing photos you've already uploaded. 
Anytime you're uploading photos to your media bin in your blog post editor, it'll automatically store it for you in the library if you need to go back later and find it or delete photos that you no longer want, you know, taking up space on your website servers. Uh, and then we've got WP Forms if you're trying to create, you know, some kind of fancy contact information form. Now, the next step we're going to do is actually start designing your website. So the Appearance tab here is where you can come find themes. Once you pick out your website theme, you'll want to then set up a menu bar that runs across the top of your website. This is the navigation bar that has your logo, you know, your home page button, your about page, contact page buttons. So that's the menu, and then you can customize the different settings of the header. The header is the basically the top section of your website where the menu goes. So those two go hand in hand. So let's go ahead and click on themes. Now they've got lots of free themes. They start you out with the WordPress 2017 theme. They've also got these older themes. What I would recommend doing if you decide you don't want to use any of these is click on theme details, come here to delete just to get rid of it because it does take up space and it makes your website slower. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these different themes that I'm not going to use. And then it's already got us set up for the default 2017 theme, but we want to find some new themes. So you can come here to the premium theme button and they're going to recommend different paid themes. They've got wordpress.org themes. You can upload your own theme by coming here to upload. But actually what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you how to buy your own professional theme on another third party website and then upload it here into your WordPress website. So a few different resources I recommend. First, using my affiliate link, asknickfoy.com slash Aveda. We're gonna go check out the Aveda theme. This is the one I currently use to run all of my websites. So it's gonna take you over here to Theme Forest, which is a marketplace where people design website themes and they upload it here to the marketplace and then you can check them out. Aveda is like the number one purchased website theme out there. It's super customizable. It's pretty beginner friendly for the most part. They've got a lot of advanced features you can do if you're you know, getting into web design. But for a beginner, it's pretty straightforward. You can click live preview to check out all the different options of you know, all the different features the theme has. Uh, but for the sake of time, all you would do is you'd come and you'd click purchase now, but since I've already bought it, it doesn't give me the option to purchase it. So what you would do is you'd purchase this theme. It costs about $60. Uh, the last time I knew they might have dropped their price since then, but you'll pay 60 bucks and then you'll go into uh, your account. So you're going to need to create a free Invado market account. So once you've created your account, you can go up here to your account dashboard area and it'll say, you know, your downloads. So you'll click that and it'll show you all the different purchases and you'll click download the WordPress file only and that's going to turn uh, a zip file into your downloads files. So from there, you're going to come back into your website, click upload and you're going to take that zip file that you downloaded. That's your theme packet. So once you bought your theme over here on theme Forest, they put it into a zip file for you where it's all condensed down. It's all packaged together in a file folder. You're going to find that in your downloads folder on your computer and you're going to come click upload and it's going to upload that folder into WordPress and it's going to, you know, have a little bar that says 0 to 100%. Once it's complete, your theme will now be inside the themes dashboard. So when we click themes and it refreshes, you know, that theme will be here in this dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and find that in my downloads and I'm going to go ahead and get it uploaded here into WordPress and show you how to start setting it up on a brand new WordPress website. All right, so here we are, the Aveda multi-purpose theme. I clicked the download button. I clicked installable WordPress file only, and it just downloaded it down here as a zip file. So now I've got that file. I can come back here into WordPress, click upload. Now from here, they're going to give you all these other different themes that you can choose from. So if you want to start out with a free theme and move on to a paid theme later, you can do so. You can also search free themes here in the search bar. But we're going to go ahead and click the upload theme button and click choose file. All right, now I've selected the zip file, click open, click install now. And then down here in the left hand corner, it says uploading and it just got to 100%. So now it's going to redirect me to the confirmation page or to the Aveda page. So now that it's con confirmed that it's installed successfully, we'll click activate to turn the theme on so that it's the active theme. You can only have one theme active at one time. 
So by activating this theme, it's going to make it the theme that's running on my website. Okay, now it redirects you to the welcome to Aveda screen. You're going to need to or you're going to be required to install a couple of plugins. Uh, but first you need to register your new theme. So they give you a little welcome tool if you want a little welcome tour if you want to, you know, watch it. But we're going to go here to the registration tab. All right, and as you scroll down here, they want to make sure that you you can confirm that you actually bought this product and you're registering it. So what you're going to do here is you're going to need to submit a token. So they actually give you the link right here, generate a personal token. So click this link and it's going to give you a code that confirms that you bought this theme. You're going to paste it in here and click submit. All right, once you click the submit button, it's going to let you know that Aveda is now installed and ready to use, that your registration was successful. You can come here to the support tab, FAQ tab, if you need additional help trying to figure out this theme. Demos is where they've got pre-designed templates that you can install if you decide you want to start with a template and customize it uh, based on how the websites look that, through the demos. So we're going to go here to plugins first and install these required plugins. So the first one's going to be Fusion Core and then they've got Fusion Page Builder. So the Page Builder one is the one that makes it real easy for you to drag and drop different boxes around on a web page so that you can easily customize your own web pages. You don't need any coding experience if you're brand new to websites. So that makes it really helpful. So Fusion Core is kind of like the engine plugin that makes this whole theme kind of function properly. So that's why it's required. So go ahead and click install. Once it gets done installing, it'll say activated successfully so you can return back to the page and install the Fusion Page Builder plugin. Okay, once both those are installed, they've got a few other recommended plugins here if you want to use sliders. So I think I'm using Slider Revolution right now. And what that'll do is you can set up a slider um, in your header area. So I'll show you an example real quick. Let's go over to Ask Nick Foy. Dot com. So this is my website where I teach online business marketing, email marketing, all kinds of tips about building your online business. So this is my header area here. And you know, I can create a little slider. In this case, I just stuck in an opt-in form. So let me give you a better example. Let's go to my golf website, golfpracticeguides.com. So I wanted to get people onto my email list. So what I did was I created a little header area at the top of every blog post. So as soon as somebody clicks onto one of my blog posts uh, from wherever they find it, whether it's Google, Pinterest, Facebook, then they've got this little header area here. So they've got this button here, they've got some text here, and a little background image. So this is my slider revolution plugin going to work. So I put that in here. All I had to do was turn it on in my blog post settings, which I'll show you later. Uh, it's at the very bottom. You'll have a bunch of little settings tabs underneath the blog post editor. So I turned it on. I picked which header I wanted to use. And now anytime you know somebody comes to a blog post of mine, this is the header that shows trying to get people onto my email list so that I can eventually you know, build that relationship with them and connect with my email community. Uh, if it's cold traffic, you know, coming by my website for the first time. So then they can scroll down here and see the article, but at least this kind of catches their attention right when they land on my website. So that's a good example of Slider Revolution. WooCommerce, if you're trying to set up an e-commerce store, this would be a good plugin. It's free, and that's what I use to sell my own golf products on my golf website. BB Press is a forum plugin. You have a calendar plugin here and a contact form plugin. So that will be what we'll get into shortly, installing different plugins. Plugins are basically, you know, just packets of code that other software developers have created to go with WordPress. So WordPress comes as a very limited template. Uh, so the people created all these different plugins to try to add extra bonus functionality and features to WordPress so that it's a more dynamic, more professional overall website. So your basic out of the box WordPress website isn't going to be real functional until you start downloading all these different plugins that allow you to do different things. So now that we've registered the Aveda theme and we've installed the required two plugins, we can come here to theme options. This is where we're actually going to start customizing the different settings for our website. So these are things like, 
you know how we want our layout to be if we want it to be a wide website or a boxed website that's got a colored border around it you could set your site width you can set different margins for how the page content padding is so does the the content start so far down the page if you want 100% width, you can pad left and right sides so there's a little space for your content. So these are the basic layout settings. You've got the menu bar, which we're going to set up a menu shortly once we create a couple web pages. Uh, so there you can customize the different menu settings. And then you've got different colors. You've got the header settings. If your website's responsive, so if people are adjusting the browser size or they're on mobile, you want your website to be able to, to be responsive and be mobile friendly. Logo is where you'd upload a logo, and then you've got your footer and your sidebar, which, you know, that's areas on your website. You can add in different content uh, that you want people to see and click on. You can set your background color. You can change fonts. You can adjust your blog post settings, and then you've got some other settings here. So it would be a really in-depth tutorial to run through all of this right now today. I do have extra videos over on my YouTube channel, Nick Foy TV, that walks you through how to use the Aveda theme if you want to learn more about the Aveda theme. But this was just an example theme option that you could purchase to design your website. It's the one that I use for my websites. Now, another theme that I want to get into that you can check out, if you go to asknickfoy.com slash Genesis, so G-E-N-E-S-I-S, -E -S, the Genesis theme is also a very popular WordPress theme that a lot of bloggers use to run their websites. So starting out, you've got to, you, you got to buy the Genesis framework. So it costs $59.95, it's a one-time fee. You know, this is similar to the price of the Aveda theme, but the difference here is that this is just the framework, which is basically kind of like how our, our, our Aveda had the Fusion Core and the Fusion Builder, the Page Builder. That was kind of the framework to trying to relate apples to apples, but basically it's kind of like a box template theme that you're buying, you're buying the framework, and then from there you're gonna pick out what theme you want and what functions you want. So there are gonna be a bunch of add-on costs because once you buy the framework, next you gotta actually pick out the type of theme you like. So you can come here to the Shop for Themes button and you can look at all the different theme layouts and options they have. And the theme's gonna probably cost you, I'd say another 40, 50 bucks, but let's go ahead and look at some examples here. So they've got lots of different options. You can kind of scroll through here. So let's say we're doing like a shop, a store theme. So click details and pricing. So this theme itself costs $129.95. And I'm assuming that's because you're buying this theme and the framework. So without the framework, you know, this theme probably is going to run you 60, 70 bucks. So it's going to get kind of costly using Genesis, but that is an option that people like to use. Um, for their WordPress website because of all the different things you can do with the Genesis framework as well. But if you're looking to stay on the cheap side, you know, that's where I would recommend going over to Theme Forest and buying that Aveda theme that I bought for my websites. All right, so those are my theme recommendations. You wanna pick out a WordPress theme that's gonna help you design your website. The importance of the theme is it's the, it's the design. So, you know, here on asknickfoy.com, this is my page I custom designed using the Aveda theme. So once you installed the theme, I, I went through and, you know, customized all the settings for my menu and my fonts, my logo. I added in, you know, background images. I, I moved around different content boxes so that I could display different pictures and content the way I wanted to. And then I've got my blog posts that, you know, start running down the page. And then at the bottom, I've got some helpful things down here. So this is how I used the Aveda page builder to custom build this page the way I wanted to. Uh, but, you know, you're going to have to play around with it. It's going to be pretty in-depth to try to, to go through the whole page builder today. So I'll just give you a quick run through. So what you would do is you'd come here to pages and you're going to need to click add new. So I'll go ahead and do it a couple times for you. So once you've added a couple new blank pages here, you can see if I open up these different tabs, it's just the blank page editor template like we saw earlier with the blog post. So we'll call our first one our home page and then our next page we'll call the about page. And then if you want, you can create a page dedicated just for your blog posts. So we'll call it blog. So from there, you would just click publish for all these different pages. So I'll go ahead and go to each tab and click publish to get them publishing. 
All right, and then once it's published, then here down here in the content box is where you'd start typing in your content. But here you see this big use Fusion Builder button. That's because we installed the Aveda theme and we installed their Fusion Builder page builder plugin. So by clicking that, they're gonna let us start customizing our web page. You can either use a pre-built page or you can design your own from scratch using different containers. The other option was using the ones that Aveda had for you. So here under the demos tab, you've got all the different pre-built website themes that they've already set up for you that you can quickly just customize around your brand or your company. So you can scroll through all of these and check them out. They've got the preview tab. And then when you're ready, you would just click import and it'll import all of the settings. So let's go ahead and look at an example one here, uh, like Aveda Vet. So if you were running a veterinarian shop, uh, for pets then you could you know use this as your business page so this is the the pre set up website that they've already set up for you so they've got this picture here they've got the menu up here with about services advice uh, contact they've got their logo you could scroll down and you can see you know different information here so you can run through this and check it out but you know again we're going to go back into the page editor show you how to customize your own page if you don't want to use a template but if you're brand new i would recommend recommend using those templates you know installing one of those demo websites that you can just quickly customize your own settings that's going to save you so much time than trying to do your own web pages but if you're a web designer and you've got you know the skills you can go ahead and create your own custom pages so you'd come here to the container box they have different containers, so this is how they divide up a page. So you could get one third, one third, one third, splitting the page up into thirds. And then in each of those third columns, you could put different elements. So they've got lots of different elements. If you wanna add a button, a content box, if you need to add code, if you wanna add in any of these boxes. I typically just use either the blog box if I'm trying to add in blog posts, or I use the text box or a title box. They've also got the video, which is the YouTube box, and then they've got an image box up here called image frame. So if we wanted to add an image, then you'd come here and we'd click upload image. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and upload a golf image to get my home page started. So it's gonna be a little opt-in uh, type image with a little button on it that can try to incentivize people to click on that image so that they end up getting taken over to my email capture page and I can try to get them into my email list where I can further send them tips and helpful things through email. So we'll go ahead and click insert into page. I want full image size. And you can go ahead and customize the rest of the settings if you want there to be like a glow or shadow if you want to center it. So we can go ahead and center this image. Then I'll click save. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and make these half columns. So you can just click on the little one third and it'll let you choose half. And I'll make this one a half. So now it takes up half the page and then the other half the page, you could put a little text box. So I'll scroll down here to the text block and I'll start typing in, you know, download my free 15 golf drills for beginners. And I don't know, if you wanna make it a heading, you can turn it into a title heading and then I can make some little paragraphs. So use these golf drills to improve your golf skills quickly. We cover putting, chipping, golf swing, mental game, and many other areas of your golf game. So I could type in a little section like that, click save. Now let's go ahead and click update and then we'll go ahead and preview the page to see what that looks like. So go ahead and hit view page here. It'll open it up to a new tab. Now I do wanna point out real quick, this URL here says home dash two. So that is an issue. When we set up our website in the beginning through dashboard, they created a home page already for us. So if we open up all pages, uh, you know, that one already took the home URL. So that's why they made this one home dash two. So here you can see they've already created a blog page for us. They've already created a home page for us. And then they've got the sample page. So I want to trash, you know, the one, the different pages that we're not going to be using. So let me go ahead and click move to trash, click apply. 
So back out here, we can see now that you know the half box and half box, it split the page in half. So this half the page is my image. This half the page is my little supporting text trying to get them you know, to click on that image. So that's very similar you know, to my other golf website where on my home page, instead I put the text up top here and then I put the image and the little button here. So this was my header area that I designed that someone sees when they first land on this page. And then as they scroll down, they'll see all my blog articles. So to add your blog articles then after you've designed your header area, you're gonna need a new container. So this is one container that houses these half box columns. So we just come here to add container. And then this time around, we will do just a one by one. So it's a full container that's, and then we'll go here to element and we'll click on blog. We'll click the layout. I wanna do a grid and then I want four grid columns. So what grid is, is it's just like you saw over here on this one, it, it makes a four column grid. So as they scroll, it's just a grid of blog posts. Or you can do one where it's just, you know, one blog post after the other and they have a long scrolling list they gotta scroll down. But to keep things condensed, I did the grid so that they all kind of line up next to each other. So that's what grid is. I set it to four columns, just like I've got four columns here. And then I would click save, we'd click update. And now when I start publishing blog posts to my golf site, it would look like this where I've got four blog articles in a row in a grid format. And then from there, I added a column, you know, putting in an email opt-in form. So again, I did like a full width column. I added a text box, I added a code box, and I pasted in my email opt-in form code here. Then I created another column or, or another container, and I, I did a three wide box here so each of these three then could have a little bit of information about my three different products and then at the bottom here i did another container that was just a full wide one by one container where i put text boxes and a button so it's pretty straightforward you just pick a container then you pick your columns how you want to split up the page in that container section and then you start adding in elements like text boxes pictures so it takes a while to design your own page uh, that's why I said it's better probably to start with a template using one of the demo pages they already pre-make for you. But if you want to get into web design or work on your skills, you can try building your own pages like I did here, you know, building out my own home page that looks pretty professional, pretty colorful, pretty well designed, I think, in my opinion. And then next, you've got to set up your menu bar up here. So you would install a logo and then you'd pick what pages you want to show up in your menu. So coming back here into appearance, you've got menus. So we'll go ahead and right click to open that in a new tab. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of these different pages that we do not need anymore. And we'll go ahead and exit out of Theme Forest. All right, so back here in our menus tab now, you've got a list of pages that you've already got on your website. First, you need to give your menu a name. So we'll call this menu number one. Click create menu. And then we're gonna to need to start selecting these different pages we want in our menu. So I'm gonna say, let's go with this home, this blog, and this about page. Click add to menu, and it's gonna pop them in over here. And then you can start rearranging the order. So the one at the very top is gonna to be the one that shows up here first. So on this website, I had a 36 day challenge menu item that would show up first here. So we want the home first, then the about, then the blog, then you want to check where you want it to display. So we want it to be the main navigation. Click on save menu and it's going to update our website. So give it a sec and then let's go ahead and go back out and look at what it looks like. And again, you can come here under the Aveda theme options and you can customize your menu settings to, to make it like a white background menu. You can customize the font size, you, the font color, the font type. So you can customize all those things. So right now it's got the Aveda logo until you install your own logo. And then they've preset it as a white background menu. It looks like they've got a little shadow overlay for your menu so that you can tell the difference between the menu and the web page itself. And then here's the custom font that they give you to start with. So I can go in and change the color that I hover. I could change the color in general. I could change the size. So lots of customization settings there to mess with later. So that's the menu, pretty straightforward. You come under appearance, you go to menus, 
you find your pages that you've already created. This step won't work until you've created pages. So since we'd already gone in and added a home page, about page, and a blog page, we're able to select those. And now out here on our website, people can quickly navigate back and forth between our different pages. You can also do a drop down menu. So here's a drop down menu where we've got you know different products they can check out. So to do that, you would just pull this over to the right to indent it. So now the about page and the blog page would be a drop down menu underneath the home tab. And then you can shift them back out to the left. Or sometimes you got to make this drop down and click remove. Let's see, remove out from under home. So by clicking that, it'll pop it back out from underneath the home tab. So again, we'll come here out from under. So that'll pop it back out. So that's how you get it back out to the main level. So that's the menu. So now that we've picked our theme, we showed you how to customize theme settings. We showed you how to set up pages, how to use the page builder. And I showed you how to customize your menu once you've got your pages set up that you want to be in your navigation menu bar up here. That's pretty much the basics for designing your website. Now to add extra functionality, to add more advanced you know, design and settings and different functions to your website, we need to install plugins. So that's the next tab here, the plugins tab. And then you'll come here to add new. I always like to open things in a new link so that I can quickly navigate back and forth between different tabs. So under the new tab, uh, under the plugins tab, I should say, we're going to start typing in some different plugin names that I'm going to give you, but they've also got the popular tab here, which is where a lot of these are actually going to be because they're, you know, super popular. Everybody uses them. So the first one, Yoast SEO, this will help you optimize your blog articles for Google search engines. Now, Google is a good place to try to, to try to rank and get traffic to your website, but it's real competitive. So you want to start out trying to drive traffic from other sources like social media or Pinterest or YouTube. Some other areas that you can drive traffic, will, you'll see results quicker than trying to do Google. But to help you rank in Google long term, since it takes many months, many years to start ranking, you need the Yoast SEO plugin. It also has a lot of other features that you need it for besides just SEO. So we'll go ahead and right click the install now button and open that in a new tab so it can start installing. And then we've got, let's see, the Jetpack one they give you automatically, but like I said, I never use that plugin. WooCommerce, this is the one we can install if we're trying to run a shop page on our website. So I'll go ahead and come over here to my store and then we'll open that up to let it start loading and I'll show you that briefly. XML sitemaps, you want a sitemap, but the Yoast SEO plugin has a sitemap function built into it. So what sitemaps are is it's basically just a way to tell Google that you've published new articles, new pages to your website. So it's it's like a map of your website. That's why it's called a site map. So it shows Google all the different pages, all the different articles, all the different images that you've uploaded to your website. And then that lets them know, you know, they can crawl that content. Their Google search engine bots will crawl that content, scan it, and it'll index it into Google. So now when people come out to Google, you know, if they type in golf practice guides, into the Google search bar, your website will come up or an article will come up. So in this case, my website's indexed into Google so it can be found by people searching things in Google. But again, it takes a while you know, to rank for different terms. So if I was trying to rank for golf practice tips, you know, that's a hard term to rank for. So my website doesn't come up here in the first four results that somebody sees on the page. So that's the whole point of SEO and using that, that Yoast SEO plugin is it'll try to help you optimize your blog articles so they can eventually rank in these first four positions on Google that people see. You know, it's not likely that people are gonna sit here and scroll and scroll and scroll. But I actually do have one of my website articles for, for that term I just typed in. It actually is right here, golfpracticeguides.com. So I finally made it onto the first page of Google and I'm down here in position number nine. They usually show 10 different articles on a page before making you go down here to page two, page three, page four. But not a lot of people actually go to those other pages. So that's why it's important to try to rank on the first page because odds are somebody's gonna scroll down this first page looking at the 10 different options. So if they make it down here, they'll see my article six chipping tips. So that's ranking for the term golf practice tips. So if I typed in something more competitive like golf, 
you know, I'm obviously not going to come up. This is going to be usually golf news or the big golf websites like golf.com, golf channel. So these are the real competitive websites that I'm never going to be able to outrank. So that's why you got to be specific about, you know, what keywords you target. But sitemaps and Yoast SEO are two great plugins to start with. Tiny MCE Advanced, I also recommend installing this plugin. What it's going to do is allow you to customize fonts on an individual blog post or blog page. So you're going to have your standard font sizes you set up in your theme settings, but if you ever want to randomly customize them for a specific blog post, that's going to allow you to do it. So if I wanted to make you know, a specific word or title on my blog post, 56 pixels or 20 pixels is the size. I can quickly update the size of that one word or that one phrase or sentence using this plugin. I don't have to go into my theme settings and try to customize the font sizes in there because then that'll screw it up for my whole entire website. So this is nice for when I'm designing specific web pages. I can use this plugin to custom the different theme, uh, the different font sizes and font settings. Word Fence Security, this is that free plugin I mentioned earlier that'll help you uh, back up or secure your website from hackers. So when we signed up for Bluehost, they try to get you to pay you know, a monthly fee on top of your hosting fee for security. But this is a free plugin that you can set up. And again, I've got tutorials for all these different plugins on my YouTube channel. Nick Foy TV so we won't actually go into the in-depth tutorials today of how to set up each of these plugins you could check out step-by-step -step video tutorial videos on my youtube channel Nick Foy TV super catch this is the speed plugin that helps speed up your website so we'll go ahead and install this one and then there's another one that you know they've got a couple other ones there's w3 total cash that's another uh, plugin but basically it makes it so when visitors come to your website um, there the pages kind of get stored so that when they come back in the future it loads it real quickly for them so they don't have to spend a lot of time waiting and it's got some other functions that help speed up your website Google Analytics is another good one so we'll go ahead and install that that's how you connect Google Analytics to your website so your Google Analytics account it's free to set up you would just come over here to Google and you would type in Google Analytics you'll create a free account and what it's going to do once you hook it up to your website is they'll be able to track your website traffic. So it'll let you know how many people came to your website each month, where they're coming from. You know, are they coming from social media? Are they coming from Google searches? Are they coming direct from other websites? Are they coming from your email that you're sending out? You know, if you link to your articles in your emails. So Google Analytics is good for finding out, you know, data about your audience, about your website traffic, and you can further optimize your your content marketing strategies to try to further grow your website traffic. So that's a good one to install. It'll let, it'll make it easy for you to connect your Google Analytics account to your website. You just have to copy uh, a slight little bit of code and you'll be all set up. Regenerate thumbnails. This one will help, you know, change thumbnail sizes of different photos on your website. That one's not super important. Updraft Plus. All right, so here's our backup plugin. This is the plugin you're going to need so that it automatically backs your website up every day, every week, every month. You know, how frequently you decide to set it is up to you, but it'll back it up to the cloud. So you can set it up to back up to Dropbox, to Google Drive. So these are free storage softwares or cloud services, I should say, uh, that you can sign up for. So Dropbox will give you two gigabytes of free cloud space. Google Drive will give you 15 gigabytes. So I would, you know, recommend drop, uh, backing up to one of these, these two, but they've also got some other options. They've got Amazon S3, Rackspace, and others. So I actually back both of mine up to Dropbox and Google Drive uh, just to be safe. So you can integrate this plugin with your Dropbox account. It'll actually walk you through how to do it. Or again, I've got a tutorial on my YouTube channel showing you how to, how to set up this plugin. And then here's the other total cash plugin I mentioned, W3 Total Cash. It's the same as the one up here, WP Super Cash. You could read the differences between the plugins, but both are designed to do the same thing. They try to help improve your website speed so that your page times aren't taking forever and ticking people off. You know, we all hate when a website takes a long time to load. So that's a good plugin again. 
Google Analytics dashboard. This is just another Google Analytics plugin, just like the one up here by Monster Insights. I use the one by Monster Insights and I've got a tutorial on this one on my YouTube channel. All right, so let's see if there's any others that we wanna to get to, but I think we've pretty much covered the basics. So you want the Yoast SEO plugin. This will help you optimize your blog articles and web pages for Google so you can start getting Google traffic down the road. It's a long-term strategy. It also has a sitemap feature, so it'll update Google anytime your website updates and adds new content, new pages, new articles. So it's kind of a two-in-one plugin, super important to have. Everybody you know, recommends using it. Everybody does use it pretty much as that runs their blog. So you don't wanna miss out there. WooCommerce, again, that's the shop plugin. So let's go over here to my shop page. So here's my you know, custom-made page I built for my website. So it's got different products here they can choose from, different options. And then when they click on one of these, the WooCommerce plugin is like a shopping cart plugin. So it'll take them to a product page where they've got the product image, a little bit about the product. You can see the price, the title of the product. As you scroll down, you'll find the add to cart button. They can choose how many they want. If you've got, you know, like t-shirts or something you're selling, they could buy clothing. They could check how many clothing articles they want. They've got reviews so people can leave reviews on your product and then they can share your product on their social media. You've also got some upsells. So down here, related products you can promote so that maybe you can get them to add more products to their cart. And then they can go up here to their cart when they're ready and they can check out. So WooCommerce, again, it's a free plugin that you know makes it easy for you to uh, basically add a shop or store feature to your website. So here's the different plugin pages. Once you've installed them, you'll need to activate them. So I'll run through here real quick and turn all these different plugins on that we've downloaded. They've installed, we just have to activate them. And then to show you how to you know, deactivate them, you come in here to the plugins tab and you can turn them on and off. So we'll go ahead and do that shortly as well. So back here, summarizing some of our plugins, we've got the Yoast, we've got the WooCommerce, We've got the tiny MC advanced. This allows you to customize fonts and different settings for each individual blog post. WordFence, this will secure your website from hackers, from viruses, from malware. Supercatch will speed up your website to make your page load times faster. Google Analytics will track website traffic so you can understand your audience and you know watch your website growth over time and try to optimize your strategy to get it growing faster and faster. So the more traffic you get, the more customers you can get. Updraft Plus is the backup plugin to back up your website. So if it ever crashes or goes down or gets hacked, you've got a backup copy in case you need to delete the original one or you know something happens to it. So those are the basic, you know, secure your website, back up your website, speed up your website. And then from there, there's lots of other plugins that it's, you know, based around the customization of things and functionality of your website. So start with those basic five, six plugins that we went over, and then you can come in here to um, your, your plugin dashboard and you can see all the different plugins you currently have. So when they're blue, that means they're activated. You'd come here to deactivate and it'll turn it back white. So these white ones here are the ones that you need to click on activate. And then if you want to like delete them or, or update them, you can do bulk actions. So they've got activate, deactivate, update, delete. So from time to time, the developers of these plugins, you can see what version they're currently on, who it was developed by, and you can learn more about each of them by clicking view details. Now they're gonna come out with new versions. So 4.1 would be the next version here. So then you're gonna have to come in and update this plugin. So that's where you can just select all. You can come here to bulk actions, click update, click apply, and it will update all your plugins for you quickly so you can get the latest versions. So the reason they come out with new versions is they add, you know, over time they update them, they add new thing, new functions, new features to them, or they fix errors that happen. So again, these plugins are designed to kind of mesh with WordPress. So sometimes when WordPress updates different settings on its end, it kind of throws off these plugins. So that's why the developers kind of come out with new versions where they keep updating them, making them compatible with WordPress so that your website doesn't experience any errors. So that's why it's super important to come into your website every so often and make sure you're updating all your plugins 
Uh, that way when WordPress comes out with a new updated version, all these plugins, you know, don't have errors or any issues with the new, the new WordPress updates. So that's plugins. I think we hit that pretty well. I showed you how to come here and install new plugins. We talked about what they are, what they do, how to update them. I showed you five or six different plugins that you want to get started with to make sure your website's backed up, secured, you know, make sure it's sending information to Google so that Google can start tracking analytics and start ranking it on Google for you. And I showed you how to set up a little shop using the WooCommerce plugin. Then we covered themes already, you know, how to design your website and, you know, make it fancy, make it look professional, installing different demos that that come with the theme. So we've kind of hit a lot of the basics for setting up your website here. We'll go more in depth on all of this in my course, Profitable Blogger, which I'll, you know, mention briefly in a little bit, but figuring out, you know, some final steps here in WordPress that you need to do to get started. You've got the users tab here. This is where you can add people to your WordPress website if you want to collaborate. So if you need other authors, other editors, other admins, you can add them here. You can also update your own profile, giving yourself a name. So I've already changed my name up here in the corner to Nick Foy. Uh, you can also display a nickname or your username if you want, but I gave it Nick Foy so that whenever anybody you know reads a blog article at the end, it'll give my little author box that I set up in my user's profile and it's got my name there instead of you know an email address or my username. You probably want to keep that information private. So I would go ahead and update and use your name instead. Tools, this is where you can have different tools. So as you install different plugins, sometimes it'll come under the tools tab. Settings, again, different plugins you install will come under the settings tab. So you can see the tiny MCE plugin I installed earlier came here. Permalinks, this is an important step we skipped earlier you need to do. Go ahead and open up permalinks and it's gonna set up the different structure of your URL. So an example would be over here on my website. So if I open up my blog article, it's gonna have a URL up here in the top bar. That's my post title. So here you can see Pinterest SEO tips to rank your pins. So it went ahead and added that to the URL. So that's my permalink, asknickfoy.com slash Pinterest SEO tips rank pins. So that's the URL structure. All right, so here we are back in the permalink settings page. So by default, they put day and name. So they stuck in a date and then the name of the blog post, but we want just the post name. So come down here and check that. That's how I'll get nickfoygolf.com slash, and then it'll stick in whatever the title of my article is. And then when you're in the blog post editor, you can customize the URL that comes after your website domain name. So it doesn't always stick in your post name. You can update it to whatever you want. It could say nickfoygolf.com slash, you know, about, slash home slash contact you can update whatever you want there but this is the one you want set up in your settings on the back end so click save changes and then general is another important tab we'll go into next okay so under general settings you, you've already got your site title and tagline we set up when we were in the dashboard at the very beginning of this tutorial and they kind of walked us through a brief four or five step setup process they also have your address already here. You're going to want to put in your email address if it's not already there. And then subscriber, English, you could select your time zone, you could select your date format, time format, uh, cash level, all these settings you can pretty much leave as is. The only ones you really need to fix are your site title and your tagline. But again, we already did that earlier. Then you can go under the reading tab. So this is the, the way your website is, is portrayed. So we set up a static front page. So the front page display is set to static and it's going to display our home page and then our blog posts are going to be published automatically to our blog page. So this is a separate page we set up. So remember when we come out here, you know, to let's see my website, I can have my own separate blog page that people can click on and open up and it'll take them to all my blog posts. And then when they come to my home page, it's its own separate static page that I custom built. So that was, you know, what that feature did there. Otherwise, you can go back to your latest post and that will just put your blog posts on your home page and it'll be nothing more. There won't be any special customized home page, but I don't recommend that. You know, I recommend doing the static page where you can set your own custom built home page and then have all your blog posts automatically published to its own separate page. And then you can still use the element features to add in a, a blog content box on your home page like I did. 
This is just its own page that has nothing but blog posts on it. You could choose then how many posts, whether it's full text summary, discourage search engines from indexing. You want to make sure this is unchecked because if it's checked, it won't allow those articles to be indexed by Google and then they won't show up in Google search, which we talked about earlier is a, a long term strategy for getting found on Google and getting traffic to your website. But this box will ruin that. So you don't want to have that box checked. So that is your basic overview of starting a WordPress website. This has been a long in-depth tutorial. I want to appreciate you for sticking through with it. And I hope you learned a lot. I tried to go you know, fast, try to cover as much as I could. Some things you're going to need to go more detailed in. It probably was confusing you know, how fast I went through everything. So you could go back, watch everything again a second time, or you can start trying your website yourself and then go back through this tutorial again later and things will start clicking because once you've actually started trying these different things that you learned today, it'll start clicking again later on once you've you know, kind of got it down in your memory. All right, so a quick recap of everything that we covered today. Step one was going to Bluehost through my link, asknickfoy.com slash Bluehost. If you want to help me out and help me tell Bluehost that I sent you, again, I partnered with Bluehost, um, you know, getting you a special rate. So they're going to let, it's going to let them know that I sent you and I do incur an affiliate fee or a referral fee, but it's at no extra cost to you. So if you want to support me, support my business, that link, asknickfoy.com slash Bluehost. We'll take you to Bluehost. From there, we picked the basic plan. Then you picked your domain name that you get for free. So you get one for free. And then if you already had a domain name, you could click that other column where we added the domain name. Otherwise, I showed you how to go over to Namecheap and buy your own domain on a third party website. We walked you through setting up the servers so they point at your Bluehost account. Then we went back into our Bluehost account. We installed WordPress. And then from there, we logged into our WordPress account. And that's where we just spent the majority of this tutorial running through all the features of WordPress, everything from the Bluehost tab, how they kind of give you a checklist. We walk through the dashboard tab, how they give you five, six things to set up initially when you first come to your website. We installed the Aveda theme. I also showed you the Genesis theme. Then I showed you how to install the plugins for the Aveda theme, the Fusion Builder, the Fusion Slider, we showed you how to create a blog post, how to create web pages, how to import media to your website, images, uh, comments you can manage. And then we showed you different appearances. So they've got the themes tab and they've got the menus tab. So themes, this is where you would come to pick out a free theme that they've already got here on WordPress. Or you can go out to that third party website, asknickfoy.com slash Aveda. And that'll take you to the Aveda theme which is the theme that I use to build all my websites. And then menus, we showed you how to set up a menu bar once you built out some basic pages like the home page, the about page, the contact page. You create that menu bar that shows up at the top of your website. Then the settings, you've got you know the general settings, the reading settings, the permalink settings that you need to fix. And then lastly, plugins, we showed you the five or six different plugins to get started with. And then there's lots of additional plugins you're gonna want to install as well. But again, if you come over here to my YouTube channel and you go to Nick Foy TV, there's gonna be a major, you know, big list of video tutorials that you can run through. So I publish videos pretty much every day. So you're gonna get lots of new uploads every week. And you can scroll through here. I've even got this one here called 22 WordPress plugins I'm using to run asknickfoy.com. So this is a good summary overview video of 22 plugins you can start off with on your website. Or I've got individual plugin videos that are about each of those different plugins that I mentioned. So as you scroll through here, you will find you know the updraft one that shows you how to back up your website. You'll find the the security plugin, WordFence, how to secure your website. Uh, I also show you the analytics plugin called Monster Insights. That's going to help you set up your, your website so that it's connected to Google Analytics and you can start tracking your website traffic. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Start out picking your hosting, picking your domain name, install WordPress, and then start customizing your WordPress website by getting a theme, getting plugins, pages, blog posts, images. It's going to take a little while to set up, but that's why I've got this course for you called Profitable Blogger. It's a in-depth 
30-day course. So over the next 30 days, I'm gonna walk you step by step how to set up your website. And you know, we're gonna cover a lot of the things we covered today, but more in depth. We're gonna go through them slower, and you're gonna learn a lot more about the web design, how to design the Aveda theme. You're also gonna learn more about the plugins. In that course, I go through step-by-step -step videos of all the different plugins to download and install, and I show you, you know, how they work, how to set them up, what they do. So not only getting your website set up, but after we get your website set up, then I show you how to start building your email list, how to start driving traffic to your website, how to start creating your own products. So if you type in asknickfoy.com slash profitable blogger, it'll take you over here to the course page where you can learn more about the course, or you can type this URL in directly. So asknickfoy.teachable.com, that'll take you to my school page where I've got different online training courses. Uh, but this one in particular is the Profitable Blogger course where I show you how to start a blog in 30 days or less, build an audience, and start earning income quickly the right way with no BS, no get-rich-quick stuff. This is all hard work systems that you have to set up. It's all about having a website, getting traffic to it, which is building an audience, and then collecting emails, getting people onto your email list, and creating products that you promote or promoting other people's products. I'll show you the five, six different ways to make money from your blog. So you're gonna learn all of that inside this course. Again, you just type in asknickfoy.com slash profitable dash blogger. It'll bring you to this page where you can watch my little intro video and you can read you know, all the different stuff that you're getting in this course. And I've even got the curriculum down here so you can see each chapter, the different lessons that you're getting. So thank you again. For watching this video and be sure to check this out asknickfoy.com slash profitable dash blogger take care